We are going to be looking at the BNG wireless wind instrument. Um, we needed one and we thought we'll get a pack as supplied by CNH Smith Marine in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And today we're going to be unboxing it and quickly having a look at what's in the box and what the instruments are. So I'm not going to do a lot of retakes, I'm just going to try and do this as quickly as possible. You can see it's fairly well packaged. Invoice. Enough bubble wrap. Box one. Box two. Box three. Box four. And box five. So five boxes in the big box. So, I guess first and foremost, the reason why we went with the BNG, um, everything, I, all the dollar figures I mentioned is in Australian dollars. Uh, we went for the BNG wireless. It came in at about two thousand one hundred nineteen dollars. Um, so that's free shipping to Australia. That is, uh, the wired system is about two hundred dollars cheaper. The Garmin system. Uh, again, it's cheaper. It's about six to seven hundred dollars cheaper. Uh, but the Garmin is single-use instruments or, sing or single display instruments, and they also um, have got a limited range on their Bluetooth. Uh, so they they quote a figure of fifty foot, uh, whereas BNG quotes a, a larger figure of uh, ninety foot or thirty meters. Um, so. Um, and the Raymarine, if you went for a Raymarine system, Raymarine's wide about $1,800 against single uh, display instruments. Uh, if you talk to the guys around the club, they all say BNG is the way to go for sailors. Um, having sailed with both, I tend to think that BNG has more functionality, um, but there's pros and cons there. Isn't it? All right, so in the first box, we have a couple of things. It looks like a NMEA 2000 backbone, which is great. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, T connectors, obviously a drop cable, uh, terminators, that's all in there. Alright, uh, this one is the um, DST which one is this? Because um, the DST800 um, was superseded by the DST810. So this is a 235 kilohertz transducer, so it's not 600 uh, kilohertz, and that's a good thing because it won't interfere with the uh, the one with the other. Uh, this is a triducer, so we've got speed, temperature, and depth on that side there. So you can see it's half and half. Okay, with the cable that comes with it. It's a through hull um, and it's the standard uh, 40, 40 something, 42, 43, 44, I can't exactly remember, diameter, which is correct for most uh, through hulls. And of course, the overall diameter is 75 as they quote you on the internet. We have obviously a, a bung to go with that. So if you take it out, the uh, bung that goes with it. Fantastic. And I believe it also has a through hole tube. When you install it, you can install it with the a supply tube. I'm not sure that you could see this, but inside there, there's, if I turn it this way, you can see there's a hole. And if I turn it the other way, the flap closes and it sort of slows down the water flow, which is great. Um, but we won't be using that because we'll install it into the current. Uh, through the hole, and of course some spare O-rings that come with that, which is fantastic as well. So I did say, oh yeah, it's, it's fairly low power, 150 milliamps or 1.8 watts, which is great, um, and it goes to a depth of 100 meters, which is fantastic. Right. And obviously it comes with a quick start guide. 
So this is a complete uh, wireless wind instrument. Um, very nicely packaged with all its documents there. This is the little bracket. Yep, little rubber seat there that goes onto that. Oh, there we go, little flaps inside there. Very clever. Undo the little flaps and it bends out without any stress to any of the items, which is always good. There we go. So a little solar panel on the top, which is great. Nice and sensitive instrument and moves as you would expect. Brings about the next little guy. And that's the uh, Bluetooth station itself. Again, a good guide with a uh, template on how to install it. Uh, depending on whether you use a pole, if you're going to mount it on a pole, that little guy comes with it. If you're going to mount it flat onto the deck, that comes with it there. Uh, it comes with its own little T connector and also its drop cable. And there's, those are the little batteries, just in case you're wondering. A tiny little lithium ion battery pack, it inserts right in the bottom there. Very simple. Um, and it's good for three years apparently, so uh, and can go for about a week without um, without any sun, which is a, a good thing. So I guess uh, most of the uh, club racers use this, that's why we went for it, uh, and your cruising sailors love it. Uh, apparently one of the most accurate uh, 5 hertz um, update is what's common. Um, I already said it's up to 30 meters, which is your typical Bluetooth standard. NMEA or WANAMEA, as they say, 2000 compatible, and this unit itself has been tested for uh, 200,000 hours. That's a, a lot of hours, so um, we know that it's good for a while anyway. So the next guy that comes in the pack as well, which is probably the most exciting. We were toying up with the idea whether we should go with a um, like an element display from BMG or um, Vulcan or one of those, um, and we decided not to. We'll keep the Lowrance for now. The Lowrance has got an EMEA 2000 capability, and we'll use this instrument, um, the Triton 2 multi-function display to complement the lower runs and give us that more detailed sailing information on a separate screen. It's a 4 inch, 4.1 inch color screen. It's uh, LCD technology, high contrast, it's, it's trans reflective, uh, which is a good thing, obviously. Uh, high contrast and you can basically see it in almost any light. Um, and it's a, a flat 8 millimeter if you mount it into the panel, it's only 8mm that it protrudes, which is good. And again, that comes with the same lens. It comes with its T-connector, lots of T-connectors. It comes with a... Um, there's a little bracket that goes between the faceplate and the instrument itself. And then obviously its drop cable, all there ready to go. So everything overall very well packaged, very happy about that. Hopefully that'll come off without too much of a 
and so on. It will be easier once it's mounted. Um, now it's just tricky because it's you're doing it in, in by hand. Um, so that's the instrument there. And as you can see, you've got the multi-function display there, and you can choose the pages. Also, it's endlessly configurable. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, practical boat owner um, described this as one, probably one of the best. Of the pick of the bunch, as they call it, uh, which is good. So it comes with, uh, it, it'll display your speed, depth, temperature. Um, it comes with the sail steer uh, system, uh, which is compatible with, uh, which gives you wind, data, and boat speed, and that's overlaid on a diagram, uh, which also shows your ley lines, heading, and uh, waypoints. So that's very handy. Um, also gives you a screen which uh, displays AOS data and you can actually make a um, DSC VHF uh, well if you have a DSC uh, VHF uh, you can make a call to one of those AIS targets um, as you choose um, already said it's in EMEA 2000 compatible um, and it's heavily customizable um, and if you add, that's right, if you add the uh, pilot display to it, um, there's a little pilot controller that comes with it, and then this becomes your touchscreen display where you can control it from. So it's, it's really is a multifunction display. All right, guys, that's all for now. Um, hopefully in the next episode, uh, we'll look at uh, why this one might be better, and we might do a comparison. And we'll also show you in one of the videos how to do the installation. Thank you very much.